Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So I have another product review for you. This time it's a lithium battery charger uh, from a company called Lee Time. They've been after me to review their batteries for quite a while, and I have reviewed their batteries in the past when they're under the name Ampere Time. Um, at some point they switched their name. So I hope I haven't been too interested in kind of repeating myself. Their batteries haven't really changed much. And I've done some batteries similar in the past. So I kind of looked through their website. Um, they had battery monitors and chargers. Um, I did a battery monitor that's almost identical last year from a company called Power Queen and also did their charger. But while I was looking over the website, I noticed they now have an 80 amp charger. So that really perked my interest. And I know a lot of people are always questioning me about what they can use to charge their lithium batteries now that they've made the switch from the lead acid in their RVs. Um, there's quite a few different uh, types. I'll show you some of the ones I've used over the years, but most of them are 30 or 40 amp, 50 amp, but 80 amp would be um, kind of handy because a lot of the, the banks people are installing now are getting up there the, as the lithium prices have dropped. People are installing 300 amp hour, 400, 600 amp hours, and you get kind of a little 40 amp charger. It's going to take forever. So this one is boasting that it can do 80 amps. So we're going to go through its uh, features. Not too much to it, um, but I'll go through that. First, I'll show you the chargers I've used over the years and how I've uh, proceeded and what I'm using now. Here we go. So about 13 years ago, we purchased our Cougar and it came with an OEM uh, WFCO charge converter, which didn't work that great. Uh, as soon as I increased to four golf cart batteries, I found it wouldn't charge very fast. So I ended up buying an IntelliPower uh, 60 amp charger. And it also came with its little charge wizard where I could overwrite, override its uh, charging algorithm and make it put out 14.4 volts, which worked great and also worked great when I upgraded to lithium because I could just use this button and turn it into 14.4 volt constant charger and charge up my lithium really fast. So I used that for a couple years. I've also reviewed this Tornado 30,000 battery charger from Top Dawn and it was a 30 amp charger and it's worked pretty good. Um, it also does a lot of other features, so kind of hung on to that because it uh, can repair batteries and do lead acid charging, that sort of thing. Last time I was down south um, for boondocking last winter, I uh, checked out this uh, one from Power Queen, and it was a 40 amp charger, and so I tested it, and it worked quite well. It's a, a lithium battery charger, much like this one, but only 40 amps, so it took quite a while to charge with. Now inside my RV, my main, ba main battery bank is uh, 460 amp hours, and I use a, a Xantrix inverter charger that can do 150 amp charging for that. But I also have a power station that I built in my truck, kind of a toolbox power station, and that's what basically I've been using this charger for. So that's what I'm going to switch over and use this charger for because it has a 300 amp hour battery in it. So this will make it much quicker to charge. And I'm hoping that my uh, maybe, maybe my generator will be able to handle that. I'm not sure I have a 2000 watt generator, 1600 watt constant. So we'll see about that. I'm not sure whether it can do it or not. But I'm, on, I'm at a friend's house, so I have access to shore power. So we'll be able to test this for you. Anyway, let's dive deeper into into the specs on this puppy here. Here we go. So it's just close to eight pounds. It's about a foot long, six inches wide, and about four inches tall. Beefy heat, heat sinks on each side. Over here we have a couple lights. You get the charging status and power. So when it's charging it's red, and then when it's fully charged, it turns green. Little handle on the top. This end, we got the fan and an on-off switch right here. Fairly beefy cable. I don't like what microwaves use. So it can handle the max current out of a, a normal uh, household outlet. 
cabling. We have about five feet of cabling. They're using uh, power pole connectors. They're good for 120 amps. Looks like uh, six gauge uh, cabling in here. And what they call 8M connectors on the end, all pre done for you. You may have to change that if you had large battery posts or use a, a bus bar or something. And a little pack of uh, mounting screws. Because it is kind of nice down here that has four uh, places so you can mount it on a wall or mount it flat. Let's go through some of the specs here. Um, voltage, input voltage 100 to 120. And we've got output voltage 14.6 volts. And output current 80 amps. Some operating temperature ranges minus 4 to 104 Fahrenheit. Any dimensions, pounds. On this side, it was interesting. There's a pre-charge stage. So if the battery is very uh, um, discharged, you will come on and put out a low current for a little bit before it ramps up to its uh, full 80 amps. And then as it gets near full charge, it'll drop down. So kind of a basically a smart charger there. I'm not sure if it will go into float mode. I don't see any particular... Uh, indication of it. Usually they'll drop down to 13.6 for a float mode and not just constantly try to charge but yeah it looks like it'll drop the current down at least. And some troubleshooting notes etc. So let's uh, demo it. I've got my uh, 300 amp hour battery down. It's around about 50 percent charge so we'll take it out and hook this up and do some measurements of the current that it's putting out and then I'll let it charge to full and see what happens. So I have a 300 uh, amp hour battery that's capable of charging up to 160 amps so it should easily handle the 80 amps this is supposed to put out. Turn the switch on at the back here. Nothing happening so far. There we go. It's gone up to 9.4 amps. And it's firing up there with 79.1 amps. 78. That's what the BMS Bluetooth in here is reporting. And my meter here is reporting 81.1 amps. Got two red lights on there for charging status. Power on and charging status is red. When it's fully charged and in standby, it should turn green. So the fan isn't overly loud, which is nice. That's because we've got a bigger case than some of the smaller ones. One complaint I had with some of the chargers is they were the fan was kind of annoyingly loud. This one's not too bad at all, actually. Although once it heats up, it may kick up in uh, speed. So we'll just let that go. It's right now the battery's at about 62%. So it should take a while to charge here. It's got about 115 amp hours to charge. I just connected it directly to the battery. In, uh, in a real world hookup, you'd probably want some sort of uh, fuse on your wire here, maybe a terminal fuse, just to protect the wiring. I'm sure this thing has internal protection, short circuit protection, that sort of thing, but uh, you want to always protect your wiring in between devices. Just checking in here, we're at 81%. It's showing 78.1 at the battery and 80.4 at the clamp on meter. Let's check the clamp on meter. It has a Bluetooth 80.3. I was doing the data history of it, and you could see 80.6, just basically constant, right around 80 amps. So we'll keep going. Let's check the heat here. Just kind of warm to the touch. 
Not much there, just right at the end here, it's a little warm to the touch. A little warmth on that side, and just kind of in this corner. That's where the hot air is coming out right there. Getting pretty close to the end, so I'll just uh, record the screen here so we can see what happens right at the end when the battery gets to full charge. Still got two red lights here, but we're starting to drop down 64 amps. Voltage is going up 14.2, 60 amps. There we go. She's done. <coughs> Green light came on, fan turned off, showing 14.35 volts on the battery. Been a nice slow decline over the course of about 10 minutes since the amperage slowly dropped. Okay, I just let it sit for about 10 minutes and the voltage is leveled out at about 13.68, which is a good float voltage. Green light here. Maybe what I'll do next is see if I can just pop the cover so we can have a look at uh, what the insides look like. Kind of see if there's any uh, issues with quality or anything on the internal bits. Just four screws and the lid popped off. It's like a hunk of uh, aluminum heat sink too. Kind of handy to be able to get in there very easily if you need to clean the fan get dust through there, vacuum it out, that sort of thing. Anyway, let's take it in somewhere where I got better light. We'll kind of have a quick, a more detailed look at the circuitry in there. Here we go. Gonna go through this as far as I can see what's going on. Get your AC power coming in. It's rectified here, a bridge rectifier right there. And then a couple big caps. They're rated for 200 volts, so I imagine it's being rectified at a fairly high voltage. Then it's kind of going through and being chopped up again into an alternating current and then fed through this transformer at a certain frequency. And then it's re-rectified again. There's a bunch of diodes along here. So I guess that way they can kind of chop it up and then feed it through kind of a DC, it's kind of an elaborate DC to DC converter, stepping down from a higher voltage DC down to a lower, higher current DC. And then we got some capacitors in here as a final filtration. They're 25 volt capacitors. And then there's a kind of a controller board in here. You can see it operates the lights there, operates the fan over there. And then there's some ad fine adjustments, probably the factory, they set up everything for the exact amount of voltage and current that's required. I did notice here this thing wasn't quite soldered right. One of the plugs here, kind of a little bit sloppy on that board as far as soldering a few things in there. Overall looks okay. Plenty of heat sink material on stuff. But uh, definitely it's worth buying one of these from a well-known company because there's a lot of stuff in there all soldered together. So if something goes wrong, you can be taken care of under warranty. There's your fan over there. Anyway, like I said, I do like that four screws just pops the top off that easy access to everything if someone did need to repair it or troubleshoot it or like I say clean it. You can see the DC wires go down and they're soldered into the main board down there. As usual I plan to do a longer term test for this product so I've got it installed right there in my truck toolbox power station with my other gadgets that I've been testing and we'll see how it performs longer term for you. Just use the four uh, mounting holes there to mount it firmly in there. 
and we'll just see if anything goes wrong or anything and see how it uh, works longer term for you. Anyway, one final test here is I'm curious to see if my 2000 watt generator can power it, so we'll give her a try. Yeah, sounding like it. Ramped right up. Yeah, I can see on my battery monitor here, 76.8 amps, so she's working with the generator. So that's good to know. That kind of soft start on it must really help. Not so much inrush current to begin with. Till next time, Ray from Love RV and Boat. Thanks for watching everyone. Cheers guys.